I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, oh, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. And I'm glad you could join us for this netcast because we've got so many geeky things to talk about. It may be an extended netcast. Yes, in other words, we might stretch it out in all of its glory. Anyway, the point is, I've got some stuff for you here. I got so much stuff. This is my tablet that I'm cranking up here. By the way, I'll turn that toward the screen and hopefully eliminate the shininess. It's kind of hard to eliminate the shininess with so many weird lights on. Anyway, <laughs> no, it's hard. Yes, there. Notice it says GTAB Devs. Yes. And, and you can see a reflection of my Kindle in the, uh, <laughs> in the screen there. Anyway, vegan tab or vegan tab, depending on how you want to pronounce that. It's all fleshy and shiny. Anyway, the shininess, see it says it's 1214 on a Saturday. Because it's 1214 on a Saturday as I record this. Now, I want to go to the Kindle. And uh, I have a reason for doing all this. By the way, <laughs> we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. I got so distracted by my shiny toys that I forgot to tell you that. And I shouldn't forget to tell you. No. Anyway, um, Kindle. Here's the thing about a Kindle. I'm going to see if I can do this without knocking the mouse off. This is a genuine, original Kindle. Actually, this is a version 2, I think. Uh, but you notice the text. See, the shiny doesn't really affect the text so much because it is e-ink. Okay? But here's what I want you to see. Check this out. I'm going to answer a question here on my Kindle. And uh, back, back. That's good. All right. Notice something. This is the Kindle. Now, you notice the size of the screen there. It may be hard to see, but compared to my hand, you see the reading area of the screen. Now, this, <laughs> which, of course, just went off. Hello. Don't do that to me. You might say, Dr. Bill. Why didn't you have all this set up beforehand? Well, I kind of did, but it the battery cut off on me. Okay, now, let me see if I can eliminate the shiny. Look at the size of that screen compared to my hand. Isn't that cool? Now, the reason that I bring this up, sorry, I did it again. Go back a page. There, even better. Okay, see? a full screen of text. The other thing is this text is backlit. Now some people say that the whole reason that the Kindle is very popular is because it is not backlit. Therefore it's not shining in your eyes and getting your eyes all tired and bleary eyed. Well, also though this screen can be seen when you're reading in bed at night without a nightlight. You might say, yeah, but Dr. Bill, what about your eyes getting tired? Dude, I look at computer screens all day long. It's what I do. Now, I'm going to go ahead and turn this off because it's just going to go into a battery shutdown mode anyway. And I have illustrated my illustration. So, I'm done. <laughs> anyway, the point is, the point to all of that was that I wanted to show you that there is a difference between the two different kinds of screens, e-ink screen on the Kindle, and the Android tablet. That was the ViewSonic G tablet, which I have shown you before. And it is also similar to 
This is a 10 inch tablet, which is why it was so big. Nice. Uh, but the Kindle Fire is going to be more like that. Yes. And so, I got it all dusty. I'm going to clean it off. It's all shiny. I like shiny. And I like the fact that it's so nice and shiny. Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> strange way to start this show. I know, but I'm, what can I say? I'm strange. You know that. Okay. Uh, no, but my point was going to be that if you get the Kindle Fire, you can expect a more tablet-like experience as opposed to the Kindle-like experience. Now, I've been reading a lot of Star Trek books lately on the Kindle and its accompanying software because I don't always read it on the Kindle device. I sometimes read it on my tablet running the Kindle software or on the Chrome browser on the computer with the Chrome Cloud Reader for Kindle. There's just so many ways. To, and my phone, which is in there again. My phone also has Kindle software on it. And I can read there. And what I really like about Kindle is all these devices are registered in my Amazon account. And so when I'm reading, I'll read a while on my phone. And then I'll pick up the tablet. And it'll say, like it did a while ago, it'll say, would you like to go to your last read place? Well, yes. So I click the button, and boom, it takes me right to where I left off on the other device. Now, if you're not familiar with Kindle, you may not know it did that, but it does. Cool. All right. Now, a word from our sponsor. Our sponsor, of course, is Citrix Systems and GoToMeeting. GoToMeeting is awesome, and it's even more awesome because now it has HD faces the full 16 by 9 aspect ratio if you have a supported webcam that will do that like my um, uh, Logitech C910 webcam that I'm using to do this show right now that webcam will work very well also the 9000 Pro Logitech will work uh, for HD you have to have an HD capable webcam. But if you do, and if your friends do, you can have GoToMeeting with HD faces. Awesome. Full HD resolution. I mean, we are really moving down the road when it comes to technology. And Citrix Systems has really excellent technology. And so I'd encourage you to take advantage of this special 30 day free trial. That's 30 days free that you can play with it, you can have meetings, you can use it totally free. And all you got to do is go to, go to, go to meeting.com. That's the website, go to meeting.com and enter the special code word podcast, P-O-D-C-A-S-T. Okay, like it says right there on the screen. If you do that, you can take advantage of this special offer, and I would highly recommend you do it because it is awesome software. I mean, really, we don't have too many meetings anymore where people actually get together in a room. We have go-to-meeting meetings. So I can definitely attest to the fact that it's very handy to do that and not have to get in a plane and fly all over the country, and you're all cramped up, particularly me. Dude, I'm all cramped into a seat, and people are going, oh, no, I don't want to sit beside this guy. Can't blame you, but anyway... There you go. All right, let's go to our blog, of course. The blog being Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon at D-R-B-I-L-L dot C-C, which, of course, stands for computer curmudgeon, as it says on the old screen there, the lower third. Don't you love that? Anyway, first item is, will Android ice cream sandwich, that's what they call their next version, Android ice cream sandwich transform your phone into a gaming console. Hmm. Well, take that Xperia Play. USB game pads are already supported in Honeycomb. That's the current version, I guess you'd say, of the Android operating system. So we had plenty of hope that Android 4.0 or ice cream sandwich would offer the same functionality and we have the answer it is a resounding yes courtesy of google framework engineer Romeo, romaine guy's twitter account he twittered about it tweet the cool part though is that hdmi is playing nice 
as well. In short, you can hook up an external gamepad to the USB to micro USB adapter on the Samsung Galaxy Nexus, for instance, and then connect it to your HD TV, dude, through the HDMI out and transform your handset into a fancy portable gaming console. Dude. <laughs> so that's cool. Android ice cream sandwich. I'm looking forward to it. Now, a while ago, I talked about the fact that we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, and we are. And here's a, a moment to celebrate being even prouder to be a part of the Tech Podcast Network. And that is that Tech Podcast has officially announced via a press release. It's a press release and everything. <laughs> cool. Anyway, Todd Cochran sent out an email to those of us who are Tech Podcast Network podcasters. Hard to say, but I did. Anyway, he said that we, meaning TPN, is now available on the Samsung Smart TV. Dude! So the Roku, the Boxy, the web devices like the uh, app that you can get for your iPhone and iPad and uh, Android phones and Android tablets all of those and now also a Samsung smart TV dude how cool is that so here's what he says we are one of the very first to be on San Samsung Samsung twit is not there revision 3 is not there but we are <laughs> the app will migrate to all devices in a few days so if you do not see it in your Samsung device, just kind of hang in there. It will show up. And he says this was a huge amount of work, not only for the programming team, but also the legal hurdles were significant. So cool. Now, that was what he sent to us as an internal, so to speak, email. This is what he said when he released the press release. He said, Raw Voice, the pioneer in digital media production, hosting, and dissemination, is proud to announce the addition of their Samsung Smart TV application for TVs and Blu-ray players. So if you've got a Samsung Smart TV or if you've got a Samsung Blu-ray player, it will show up on that. The Tech Podcast Network TPN app also allows content creators to reach connected audiences that will watch and listen to the network shows in their offices, dens, living rooms, bedrooms, and anywhere else they watch television. Dude. So, cool stuff. So, if you got a Samsung device, go check it out. You may be able to just sit back on your couch, flip your remote, and watch TPN, and check out Dr. Bill on TPN. Cool. Anyway, Android, this is the next item. Android now market leader in app downloads. Ha <laughs> ha. Now, as I say here in the post, I knew it wouldn't be long before this happens. <laughs> that we overtook the iPhone and iPad, and now... Android is the leader. <laughs> so, you might say, Dr. Bill, why are you gloating? Because I'm an Android dude, man. You know what I'm saying? I just like Android. So anyway, they, uh, according to fresh data, this is what it says, fresh data from ABI Research, more Android apps were downloaded in Q2 of 2011 than iOS apps. I mean, it just doesn't get any better than that. You know what I'm saying? I don't know why I get so competitive against... Apple in these things, but I guess, you know, a lot of people would say it's that it's amp, Apple, Apple, Apple Apples, hey, no, Apple lust, <laughs> meaning I want Apple devices, therefore I kind of diss them because I don't have them, you know what I'm saying, but they're so expensive, dude, I mean, this tablet is a 10-inch tablet, the iPad is a 10-inch tablet. This has dual processors. The iPad 2 has dual processors. This has 1080p resolution. The I don't know if the iPad 2 does. It may still be at 720. I know the old iPad was 720. Anyway, this was 200 and some bucks. The iPad is like 500 bucks or something. I mean, give me a break. Anyway. I know I get a little... You know, Maybe, maybe it's the curmudgeon in me, you know what I'm saying? Just don't want to pay all that money. How do I pay the money for this silly device? 
just give me the one that works. <laughs> and it works for me, so what can I say? By the way, I was pointing out the vegan, vegan tab, vegan tab, vegan tab, whatever. You know, vegan is more like you're, you're in an old Chevy Vega, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Whereas vegan is you don't eat meat, man. You know, so I guess I'd be more the guy in the Chevy. Because so, I eat meat, for sure. Anyway, the point is, I replaced the operating system that came with the ViewSonic G tablet with the replacement <laughs> from Vega Tab, and it's hacked, and it's cool, and I like it. So, anyway, <laughs> next item Mozilla delivers a bingified version of Firefox. What? Yeah, you got that right. Mozilla has long promoted Google. But they're kind of, and, and this will be in another article as we get a little further into the show, but uh, they're kind of moving away from Google for some reason. I don't know why. I'm not privy to these things. But they have made an agreement with Microsoft. As I say, Mozilla is getting into bed with Microsoft. It's just wrong. Anyway, oh, the humanity, I say in my blog post. Mozilla delivers a binged up, pinged up version of Firefox browser. They've released a customized version of Firefox that defaults to Microsoft's Bing search engine. Now, I have a friend at work, hi Phil, who likes Bing a lot. And he is very anti-Google. He is just not into Google. He thinks they're out to take over the world. You know, I mean, Microsoft is out to take over the world. Google may be out to take over the world. Frankly, I think most everybody is out to take over the world. You know? I mean, it's like they don't have anything better to do, so they go out to take over the world. Me, I'm not really interested in taking over the world. You know? For one thing, it's not as shiny as it used to be. But I like shiny. <laughs> so, anyway, next item. The patent office approves Apple's slide to unlock patent. Now, <coughs> I'm getting all choked up just thinking about it. The slide to unlock patent. Remember to remind me to get a glass of water to have with the net cast so that I can sip the water and get my throat undry. This dry heat in the winter and me talking makes my mouth dry. So that's a problem. I can't very well get up and go to the kitchen and get some water while I'm doing the net cast because I like to do it live. As Todd Cochran says, as live as it can be. Live to the hard drive. Anyway, <clears throat> so forgive me if my voice starts to get <clears throat> a little raspy. So, I was talking about Apple's slide to unlock patent. Now you're familiar with slide to unlock. That's where you have your, your phone or your device and you have to slide across the screen to unlock the screensaver thing, Gizmo. Well, Apple has patented that. What? I mean, come on. That's that's not something you patent. That's just a that's a thing you do. But you can imagine that many, many device makers are gonna have to shell out some money now to Apple, and that's their plan. See, that's why I look using patents is like a stick or a hammer or a thunker on the head thing. It's just not good, in my humble opinion. You should innovate and you should do cool things that make people want to buy your products, which Apple does. So, but don't patent your slide to open thingy. That's silly. And besides, we're used to it now. It's not like it's an innovation. <sighs> anyway. Again, just my opinion. Let me go back to my my Kindle, which is still on, by the way. Isn't that cool? Anyway, this Kindle is in a 
case, a leather case thing. But basically, the next item tells us that a fully loaded Kindle weighs more than a Kindle that doesn't have stuff in it. Now, you might say to yourself, self, I thought that 10,000 electronic books were just electrons and they wouldn't weigh anything. Well, it turns out electrons do weigh something. They are, after all, things, right? So if you load up your Kindle, it gets heavier. Now, I didn't say it was noticeably heavier. No. But if you are a scientist and, is, and you're prone to study these odd things and get grants from the government to talk about heavy Kindles, <laughs> then you may find out how much it weighs. And here's what it is. John Cowbell Towitz, I'm sure I pronounced that wrong, a computer scientist at the University of California, Berkeley. <laughs> that explains a lot. Berkeley, you know, University of California, Berkeley. Oh, man, wow, I wonder how much a Kindle weighs. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, not going there. He tackled this vital question for the New York Times. He explained that e-readers store data by trapping electrons. And while the number of electrons in the gadget's memory does not change, it takes more energy to hold them in place than to leave them roaming free. <laughs> yes. How much more energy? Around a billionth of a microjoule. A billionth of a microjoule for each bit of data stored. Okay, working from Einstein's famous equation, E equals MC squared, by the way, which states that energy and mass are equivalent, mm, eh, related, uh, Kubautiowicz worked out how much the weight of a Kindle might change as the books built up. He compared an empty 4 gigabyte Kindle with a full one, in which the electrons were trapped, requiring an extra 17 microjoules of electricity. Joule here, by the way, is J-O-U-L-E-S, not shiny little rock-looking thing. Anyway, popped into Einstein's formula, this gives an answer of around one atogram. Atogram, kind of like attaboy. That's what it made me think of. Meaning the weight of a full Kindle was a billionth of a billionth of a gram more than a factory fresh one. Which isn't so bad, considering that 10,000 books, a fraction that the Kindle can hold, might weigh five tons in the real world, physical books. An atogram, very roughly, is one-tenth of the weight of a small virus. Who knew? So, your Kindle will weigh more the more you put in it. You know... I could have probably told him that without a whole lot of scientific study. And does anybody really care? But anyway, oh well. Next item, YouTube announces a hundred new channels. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, these channels are different than the channels that you or I might create, by the way. These are professional Channels. Well, I'm a professional, you know. I mean, oh well, anyway, never mind. <laughs> professional video channels on YouTube. Apparently, there will be. And it says Google is launching more than 100 new YouTube channels with exclusive video content commissioned from media companies and celebrities. Producers with their own channels will include Thomson Reuters, The Wall Street Journal, Select, Comedy Magazine, The Onion, Jay Z, Ashton Kutcher, <laughs> yeah, Deepak Chopra, Shaquille O'Neal, who will have a comedy channel, okay, a very tall comedy channel, <laughs> and Madonna will have a dance channel, okay, I think I'll give that one a miss. Anyway, in the blog, I have a list of all the partners that have signed up. I'll just randomly pick some, the WWE no. Um, the Magical Elves 
and in style magazine little black dress what <laughs> Steve Spangler's science in the Spangler effect okay uh, modernmom.com and the modern mom channel okay gets weirder as you go along uh, how about Voo Guru and Pow Entertainment Stan Lee's World of Heroes now we're talking all right uh, the bleacher report don't know what any of these things are just throwing them out there comedy shack network that's Shaquille O'Neal's network yes um let me scroll down a little further here see what else we have the black box TV Anthony Zucker founder of CSI CSI that would be crime scene investigations Sure, it's a different CSI. Anyway, and Federator Network's channel or Federator's cartoon hangover. Yes. Well, there's lots of them there. There's a hundred channels listed, so read the list and enjoy and get ready for the strangeness that will be the new hundred channels on YouTube. But YouTube is trying to become more like a regular TV channel. You know what I'm saying? Whoa! Yes. Geek Software of the Week time. There's the drum roll. Sigh. Geek Software of the Week this week is... <laughs> My throat is strained. Iwisoft. At least I assume that's how you pronounce it. I-W-I-S-O-F-T. Iwisoft. Free Video Converter. Now this free video converter is fast effective and has lots of supported formats so it's cool check it out and it's free 100% free I like the free I'm always into the free okay and here's some of the formats AVI MPEG WMV DIVX XVID MP4 H.264 AVC AVC HD FLV MK4 RM MOV3 GP and audio MP3 WMA Wave RA M4 AAAC AC3 OG OG I like OG anyway that's why I always have an OG format audio file of the netcast available for you and it's open source gotta love that don't have to pay Fraunhofer for the MP3 format codex just saying um, it also will directly convert video for Plug It Back on your PSP, iPod, iPhone, Apple TV, PS3, Xbox, Zoom, Creative Zen, Arcos, and other digital multimedia devices. <sighs> so, long list. I gotta have water. My throat's getting dry. This must be the dry throat edition of Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. <sighs> anyway. I really do have to get some water, so I'm going to have to head out of here. But I will say this, tune in next time when the doctor will say, remember to get some water before you start the show. Know what I'm saying? The doctor is out of here. Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillBailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.